What's up bookworms? This is Danny Reads and today I'm going to be talking about my top 2017 reads. I was kind of mind blown by the things that I read this year because I feel like the stuff I read like in the middle of the year between like May and July, like August about, I feel like I read those so long ago. So I'm like scrolling through and I was like, that was this year? That was this year? So it was like kind of weird. But when you read 105, I think that's what my Goodreads said. When you read over 100 books in a year, I feel like it just feels like it was forever ago. So I'm just going to talk about the books that I loved in 2017. Some of these are not going to be five star reads, but they did enough to get on this list. I didn't count how many there were, but let's just get into it. So the first book that I really enjoyed in 2017, and that is Children of Eden by Joey Graceffa. I don't own a copy of this. I own the second book, which didn't I didn't know was coming, but it did, and I haven't read it yet, but I really want to. I really like the concept of this story it's about this society where every family is only allowed to have one child well our main character is a twin and since she was born second she's technically illegal so what their family does is they've hidden her this whole time and things start to happen obviously it's a just it was a just it's it's a dystopian so it's kind of like let's take down you know whoever is in charge stuff like that take down the government kind of thing and I loved it I totally connected with the main character there's definitely some girl on girl romance which is great and it's just it's done really well it's not like crazy amplified or it needs it's the it's done well it's not overdone I'm just gonna leave it at that so the next book that I picked up Finally, I can't believe I finally read this in 2017. I put it off for so long, but that is End of Days by Susan E. I loved this. I loved how it wrapped up. I just, I love the series so much. This is definitely on my radar for a reread very soon, but I just really liked how it ended. I don't even like know what else to say about it. If you don't know, this is the last book in the Angel Fall series. And Angel Fall is about this apocalypse that is caused by angels and they want to like take over the world and like kill all the humans pretty much. And it's, I'm like whipping this book around like nobody's business. <laughs> and, sorry. <laughs> and the main character is this girl and she is trying to figure out why this is happening and how to take down the angels so that she could just have her world back. So it's just so good. The romance in here is really great. I just and I don't really like what in dystopian ish kind of books apocalyptic kind of books I really usually don't like the romance in it because I feel like it's like just stick with the problem and don't really but the romance wasn't overdone I thought it was done really well and I just really really enjoyed this book and I'm so glad I finally got to read it the next book that I read I actually listened to this on audiobook which if you have the opportunity to I would highly suggest it I really 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 enjoyed it and that is Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. I'm super excited to see the movie. I'm kind of nervous though. I hope that nothing really happens that like strays too far from the book but I really enjoyed this book. It's definitely I'm definitely probably going to reread it once a year. Like I really enjoyed it. Love the main character. This book is about this society where you can like go into virtual reality and just kind of hang out and that's like pretty much what everybody does. And this gamer, I think, some guy, that's helpful, some guy puts out this contest and if you win the contest you win like this huge grand prize and our main character goes on it to pretty much win obviously so it's just it's full of adventure i really liked it i loved all the pop culture references they were really fun and yeah definitely going to be rereading this sometime in 2018. the next series i picked the whole series for this because i'm trash for it and i know i shouldn't be and i know it's problematic but i'm trash 
for this series and that is the selection series by Garrett Gaz. I was trash for this and I know a lot of people were and it's honestly I don't watch The Bachelor which I'm surprised I don't because I was really into this but I just I avoided picking up the first book I owned it and I was like oh I'm never really gonna get I'm probably not gonna get to it it doesn't sound very good a lot of people said it wasn't really that good and then finally it was available on overdrive for an audiobook and I was like well I'll just listen to it no harm no foul within three days I completed the entire first part of the trilogy I then later read the like kind of spin-off to it um the crown and the air I believe are the names of those didn't care for those but these trash for the only thing the really the only problem I had with them I mean besides the stuff everyone has a problem with was the ending of this I feel like they just of uh, the one I feel like they just wrapped it up a little too easy but trash and this next book is actually it's another series that I just fell in love with in 2017 that I was actually really surprised about because I wasn't I didn't hate this author's other series that I read but I didn't absolutely love it and so I was really surprised that I loved this series and that is the Heroes of Olympus by Rick Riordan. I loved these. I love the continuation of them. I think it's because the like Percy and his gang were a lot older so it just I don't know I connected better with the characters. I felt that their adventures were a little bit more mature. They made more sense to me. I love the plots of all of these. This is good. I liked I loved this. If you haven't read anything by Rick Riordan I would highly suggest starting with the Percy Jackson and the Olympians, but then read this because it is great. I'm sorry I'm not really giving like too big of a synopsis on this. I just don't want this video to be super, super long because, I mean, I don't have too many books left, but I just, I don't want this to be a super long video. <laughs> if you want more information on either how I feel or what the book is about, comment down below and I will give you that info on that specific book. The next book that I read in 2017 and literally fell in love with this is probably I didn't put these in any order of how much I love them like the last book isn't gonna be the, mo the one I love the most or the least this is my number one read of 2017 and that is Girl Hearts Girl by Lucy Sutcliffe I love her as a person I think she's so great we're not friends but I want to be this author was a youtuber with a long distance relationship and they got pretty popular and it was just really fun to watch their relationship as it progressed and but this book is about before that this is all about her coming out and coming to terms with being gay and all that stuff and it's just so impactful i feel like if you're having a hard time coming out or you've already come out or if you're straight whatever but like i feel like if you're having a hard time coming out you should read this i feel like it's really important just hearing her story was really really heartfelt and i feel like if i wasn't out already this would have definitely helped me go in the right direction to get there but i hands down number one favorite i literally read this in like a day and a half it's so good so good if you want more information on this book this is the one book I will happily talk about forever but if you haven't read it read it it's great so the next book that I really loved in 2017 and that is Beauty Queens by Libra Bray I listened to this on audiobook and let me tell you I loved it if I read it I probably wouldn't have liked it as much to be totally honest but since I did listen to it on audiobook Libra Bray actually narrates on the audiobook but this book the the one-liners in this book on point loved it love this book this is about a it's pretty much a girl version of Lord of the Flies so this airplane crashes and it has a bunch of beauty queens that are on their way to a contest in it and they crash and then they have to try and survive stuff like that so good Libra Bray's writing I love it I was actually really hesitant going into this because I did read The Diviners by Libra Bray and I wasn't a big fan, but don't worry, I know so many people love that series, I'm giving it a second chance, you'll see that in a video to come, but I'm giving it a second chance, but I was just super impressed with this 
and it just made me laugh out loud so many times and I actually listened to this in the car with Heather and both Heather and I were just cracking up the entire time so this was a really great book so I highly suggest the audiobook for this one because it's really really good and the next book is Lies My Girlfriend Told Me by Julie Ann Peters I really like this book it's super short it was a really fast read I really love Julie Ann Ju Julie Ann Peters writing and her stories I it's they're usually the all the ones that I've read have been LGBT which is great but this is a uh, the main character she finds out that her girlfriend has died and she ends up getting a hold of her cell phone and finds out that her girlfriend was leading a double life and actually dating somebody else at the same time so then things kind of spiral from there the one thing I had the biggest problem I had with this book was the main character I thought she was super whiny super annoying I could not stand her I hated her but I loved everything else about this book that I still had to put it in my top 2017 reads because I easily could separate the main character and how she was acting a super immature and like an idiot separate that from the story loved it loved it loved it loved it so if you're looking for something LGBT that's super short and kind of like I wouldn't say mysterious but it definitely was a page turner because I wanted to find out like why her girlfriend was doing the thing she was doing pick this up it's super quick and it's just it's it's good the next book that I loved in 2017 was a man called Ove by Frederick Backman why did I say it like that <laughs> Frederick Backman I own this book but my sisters are borrowing it so I don't have a physical copy but I listened to this on audiobook and I loved it. I honestly feel like if I read it, like physically, I probably wouldn't have enjoyed it as much as I did listening to it. Because it is a little bit slow in the beginning, but I fell in love with every single character in that book. Like, I loved every single one for all their different reasons. And it's just a really heartfelt book. I think it's really great. I think everyone should read it, so go read it. This next book, no one should be surprised. This book I also own, but I can't find it anywhere. I have no idea where it is. I literally looked on my shelf so many times. And that is To All the Boys I Loved Before by Jenny Han. I have talked about this book in so many different videos and how much I love it. And yeah, so I love this book, guys. <laughs> I was super surprised. If I had to do a ranking, this would be my number two favorite of the year. But I'm not doing a ranking, but it's way up there. And I I don't know, I just, I love Laura Jean. I thought she was just really sweet. I loved her love interests throughout the whole, um, at least the first two books. I haven't read Always in Front for Laura Jean yet, but I will eventually. <laughs> but I love the first two. I thought they were really great. I loved, pretty much every character in that as well minus one person but I'm not gonna get into it if you want to know comment down below and I'll tell you but I'm not gonna say it to spoil everyone not that it's really a spoiler but like I don't know I just didn't I didn't like this person but anyways irregardless loved this book loved the series or the duology and I will pick up the third one at some point this year but those are the two like best the next book that i read this year that i am actually surprised it's on this list <laughs> and i know i'm like i shouldn't i shouldn't be surprised because i know what i loved this year and i know what i didn't like this year but only because for the or only for the fact as i did not really get this book until i was about 100 pages away from being done and that is the serpent king and i just i really like i as i was like i was actually listening to it on audiobook because you know audiobooks are like 75 percent of my reading and i'm listening to it and i'm like okay and i'm like kind of like trying to figure out like why is all this important i really didn't know where the story was going and then boom something happens and it turned from like a 2.5 star read for me into a 4.5 like it was so good so good and it's it wasn't a very long audiobook i think it was only like four hours so it was like super short from what i remember and oh my god 
that last part just got me. So that's what snatched its way up into my top books of 2017. But if you haven't read it, I would suggest it and I would definitely suggest getting past the earlier part of the book because it does get better and it's just, you just gotta get there. And the final book on my 2017 top books is Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. I really enjoyed this book. I did see some of the twists coming but I didn't see others and I've actually been looking for a new author that does like psychological thrillers or just thrillers just because I have read all of Gillian Flynn's books and I'm not a fan of Paula Hawkins so I was kind of looking for someone to kind of replace that. If you have and if you know of any psychological thriller authors that are really good put them down below. It's a genre that I really really love but I can never find good authors for it or at least an author that can't trick me I guess. Um, if I can kind of see where how it's gonna go, I get really bored. Like, you need to really, like, mess me up. So, <laughs> I'm just, yeah, so I'm always on the hunt for new psychological thriller authors, but I really did like this book. I thought the beginning was kind of slow, though. Some of the information was a little bit unnecessary in the, in the beginning. It's a real, it's a pretty thick book, and it was an 18-hour audiobook, and I feel like at least four of those hours were unnecessary. And I almost DNF'd it, but I'm glad I didn't because getting to the end was really satisfying. Those are all the books that I loved in 2017. Stay tuned for tomorrow's video where you will see all of the worst books I read in 2017. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. I am as of right now, I'm seven subscribers away from 100 and I'd love to get there before my birthday, which is on January 23rd, which is in a week. Thank you so much for watching. I love you. Keep reading. Keep smiling. Bye, guys.